A couple new faces as head coaches in this league. One of them, Stan Drayton, who has played or played, coached under some really incredible. He was most recently the associate head coach at Texas, was the running backs coach at Ohio State when they won the national championship in 2015. For what you know about him, and we've, there's been a lot of turnover within the last yeah. decade at Temple. If you're him, like, what's number one on my checklist? Yeah, I mean, just get in there. You, you hear it said, change the culture. So Coach Drayton's going to want to do things his way. He's been in a lot of programs. He's coached for a lot of years, but you hit on it. It's the sixth new head coach in seven seasons for Temple. I mean, this program is starving for some continuity, yeah. you know, to get a coach in there to stay, and, and hopefully Coach Drayton is that. And I love the fact that he was a former running back. He was a three-time All-American in college, at Allegheny College back in the day. So he likes to run the oh, football. Giving some, giving some love to the running backs here. Absolutely. So I, I got a feeling <laughs> Temple may be a little, maybe a little run heavy yeah. this year. We might have to ask him. One thing that I think that we miss when we say six coach and seven seasons, six of those seasons they were above 500. So there is a winning culture there. Hence they just need why they in. left coaches. They exactly. were or coaches left. They were successful and they just kind of yeah. moved on. That's just the nature of the beast. All right, let's talk with the first year head coach, Stan Drain. Coach, you have coached under so many successful coaches before. I'm curious, what have you taken from your previous stops, from those mentors that you take into Temple as you start your program? I try to take everything. Hopefully I can, uh, I wish I could take those rings that we won at some of those places, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, working for championship coaches, for example, Urban Meyer, you know, Jim Trestle, you just take a little bit of everything from those guys, you know, uh, Urban Meyer was notorious for alignment, you know, and I think that's the main reason why we're able to win the way we did back at Florida and Ohio State was he was able from top to bottom, both on and off the field, uh, get a institution and a program aligned with one another and, uh, you know, create a culture uh, where uh, players are, are forced and, and challenged to win both on and off the field on a daily basis. And uh, this is some of the things that really stuck with me uh, and building this culture, you know, I know alignment is, is definitely a critical thing for us, you know, and also just building a, a team that, that that truly loves and, and wants to play for one another. And I think that's something that I've learned from a series of coaches along the way. Um, but those would be the, the two major pillars for how we'll win ball games here at Temple. Well, we appreciate you taking some questions. Let's toss it over to Chuck Sullivan, who's going to facilitate our media questions for you. Thank you, Chris, and welcome, Coach, to the American. We'll get started with uh, questions from the first one from Sam Cohn from the Philadelphia Inquirer, please. Hey, Stan, it's good to see you. want to ask about a uh, guy, Zach Gill, um, who you described as an emerging leader back in the spring. Just curious what his summer has looked like uh, and where you think he's improved the most both on and off the field. He's healthy, <laughs> you know, finally. You know, um, it was very obvious of the leadership traits that he was going to bring to the table. I could just remember the very first team meeting that I had um, and not knowing his name, not knowing who he was, I just saw this one individual sitting in the front row staring at the back of my skull trying to grab onto everything that I was saying. And it turned out to be Zach Gill, you know, and uh, he's a guy who has uh, stepped outside of his comfort zone uh, personally to, to, to make sure that, you know, he does a phenomenal job of rallying the troops, you know, uh, uh, making sure that they hold accountable to what it is we're asking our players to do. And that's basically stay aligned with winning championships both on and off the football field. And, um, you know, he's healthy now. You know, we finally overcame uh, his leg injury, and uh, he's doing everything full speed. He's gotten himself stronger in the weight room. He's lean, you know, and uh, he's got his confidence level back as a player. So uh, he's an intricate part to, to, to the success of this football program moving forward. Thank you. We'll go next to Javon Edmonds, uh, WHIP, please. Stan, I wanted to ask you about transfers like Adonikis Sanders, Quincy Patterson, guys who came in, uh, you know, your first transfers once you got the job. How are they fitted into the culture and, and moving up on the depth chart heading into camp? Yeah, you know, they're, they're phenomenal additions to this program. The number one thing that both of those guys you mentioned, they bring playing experience. You know, they, they, they've been in the war before. They've been on the field and they've, they've, uh, were productive uh, football players for their for their previous program. So um, also a level of maturity. You know, they they are guys who 
um, in those positions where we felt that we had to grow in, in a lot of different areas, one being maturity. Uh, these guys are natural leaders who uh, don't flinch in the midst of adversity, and uh, they handle their business both on and off the football field. So they're great examples uh, for the guys that are young in that room that, that were trying to figure things out. And you know how it is. Anytime you bring um, a proven player into a room, you, you, you raise the level of competition in that room. And it's that that makes everybody in that room better. You know, so immediately the, the level of competition has risen in those in those groups, and uh, you know everybody has gotten better from it in the off season. So we'll see what it looks like on the depth chart. You know, they still have to go out there and uh, fit our system, and get out there and be productive. You know, and it's not necessarily about you know uh, how old you are and where you've been. It's a matter of how productive you're going to be, and uh, so we'll we'll see what that looks like in regards to the depth chart real soon here. When Temple has success, it's usually because the O-line and the D-line are able to hold their own. How have they progressed since uh, spring camp, spring practices? Well, I'll tell you what. The, the D-line uh, is probably the, the most tena tenacious and uh, the strongest group of leaders on the entire football team. Those guys have done a phenomenal job of uh, building a camaraderie amongst each other. They're holding each other accountable. There's positive conflict amongst each other. And uh, they're really a strong group coached by Antoine Smith. I mean, if you know Antoine Smith, you, you're not going to be able to step the wrong way without him, you know, being right there uh, to get you right on track. So those guys have embraced that culture, and uh, I'm really excited about that D-line. Uh, the offensive line, obviously, in the spring, you know, there was some, some shuffling of the deck. You know, we're trying to figure out who's going to better serve us at certain positions. So... Uh, their development was somewhat slowed down because we're just moving them around, trying to figure out uh, where uh, it's going to be the best suited for them to help us win ball games, run the football, protect the quarterback, those things. And uh, now that uh, we're through the spring and we kind of got a better sense of that, uh, they'll be able to kind of hone into their positions. Um, but the one thing I can say with the leadership of Adam Klein and Isaac Moore, uh, they've really bought into the development in the off season in regards to you know, learning the system, you know, getting getting a better feel for what's going to be asked of them in certain situations and and, and rallying their 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 whole entire group uh, to do the right things all the time. So it's, it's it's you know, it's exciting to watch those two guys grow. I just can't wait to get the camp to see uh, those two positions uh, make each other better. Thanks, Dan. We'll go next to Rock Hoffman from Football Stories magazine, please. Hi, Coach. Good afternoon. Um, you've mentioned culture know. already uh, two or three times uh, in, in this little segment we've had. Um, obviously, you know, you weren't here last year, but have you gotten feedback from people that the culture is changing at, at Temple now that you're there? Yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to batter the word culture, but uh, there were some things that needed to change, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know what necessarily uh, happened with a uh, previous regime before me or anything like that. But what I do uh, know, learning from our football players, is where they need to grow, you know. And we locked in and focused on, you know, what were their strengths and what are their current weaknesses, both on and off the football field, that are either helping us win ball games or helping us lose ball games. And we address those issues, you know. And uh, we've been very vulnerable with each other in the process of doing that. And I think that that's brought us closer as a football team. And that alone, that closeness, that cohesiveness that's starting to develop within the team is the main thing that our players are talking about, uh, that they feel awesome about. And they feel with that piece that they'll get, that, that alone will give us a chance to, you know, come closer and, and have a chance to win ball games. So, you know, uh, you know where, uh, everywhere I've been, you know, uh, you don't win championships unless you're a tight football team, a team that's, uh, playing for one another, you know, stepping outside of your individual goals that you have for yourself and making the team goals a priority. And uh, I think that's the one thing that our players are feeling to be genuine. And if that's the case, then uh, I, that makes me very excited about what the future is for us as a football program. And you mentioned the offensive line, still a little bit of a work in progress. Um, Adam Klein is a guy that's played everywhere. How does that versatility help you guys? Tremendous, right? So, we know those guys get beat up from over the course of time. And you're right. I heard somebody say, you know, being a former running back coach, yeah, we, we plan on running the football. So, 
you know, we, we plan on being a very physical unit and, uh, you know, when injuries happen from time to time, uh, we can't get ourselves pigeonholed uh, because we developed a player one dimensionally, you know, so to have position flex, especially at the offensive line, especially with a proven player and Adam Klein uh, really is a, is a special thing. And uh, we're, we're going to play into that, but uh, we're going to get Adam Klein settled in and we're still going to cross train those guys. But um, again, as you as you noted, to have position flex at the offensive line is a tremendous advantage. Thank you, coach. Thank you. We'll go next to Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. Coach, uh, for you, for this Temple program, I know you were just talking about how some things needed to change. What was advantageous for you to be a part of, of this program at Temple and lead it, as I know that you and your wife obviously have a connection to Philadelphia, but why right now was it a good place for you to build and to change this culture? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, and, and a little bit of a tough question to answer, but um, the one thing that uh, I'm excited about it being at a place like Temple, being an inner city kid from Cleveland, Ohio, myself, my wife being an inner city kid from Detroit. We can relate to where these kids are coming from. You know, we understand the dynamics of where uh, our recruiting areas are and what these kids are coming from and what they're going through and what they experience and the things they had to overcome to get to this, this opportunity that they're experiencing. So um, that alone uh, helped us to bridge some gaps rather quickly. Um, but uh, this team was hungry. You know, they're hungry. They, they carry a, a chip on their shoulder. Uh, they carry an underdog mentality that can be used as a positive. And, you know, I kind of was that type of a player, you know, Division three player that, you know, felt that he was overlooked or whatever it may be. And I created these experiences and made them an edge for myself, you know. And I think these kids carry an edge. And that's, that's always been Temple. You know, I've always looked at this, this place, you know, from the sideline and watched the the, the product that was put on the field and the, the physicality that they brought to games and, the, um, you know, the toughness, the grit that they brought to games when they were winning football games around here. And uh, I tried to, uh, you know, be that as a coach, and then that's what I was as a player. So that, that alone right there allows me to kind of stay within who I am, and uh, these players are buying into that. We'll go next to Leo Haggerty, please. Coach, when you come into a, a program where John Chaney was an icon, and he would practice at 6 o'clock in the morning just to make sure his players got out of bed and then went to class, are you talking about doing anything like that to, to try and change the culture? No, we're not talking about it. We're doing it. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing. Yeah, we, we, we practice in the morning and... Uh, you know, uh, once they take the helmet off, we're, we're deep in their lives, making sure that they're doing the things, making the right decisions that continue to help us win championships both on and off the football field. And that's what this place is. You know, we take pride in developing the whole man, and that's exactly what Cheney did. And to sit here and have a, uh, uh, a head coach in Aaron McKee who actually played for Cheney and see him go to work every day and see the influence that someone like Cheney had on him just reemphasizes exactly the direction that we need to go in the, in the development of the whole man in this program. So absolutely, that's exactly what we're doing. Coach, quick follow-up to that. The bad news is your closest rival is Navy. The good yeah. news is your recruiting area, 150 miles in any direction, you're pretty much the Division I program. How much are you recruiting the New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia area? Those are our footprint. You know, those are tremendous areas for us. Uh, we're, we're hitting those areas hard. You know, we feel as though from New York all the way down to the Virginia area and, and, and cherry pick through Florida is where we've got to make our hay. You know, so uh, uh, those those areas in the past, if you just look at the, the tradition of the history of Temple football, that is where uh, when they were winning, they, they've got a bulk of their football players. So Jersey's a very talented football state. Uh, uh, tremendous talent comes out of there every single year. Obviously, Penn State and Rutgers have done a good job of, of picking those guys out. And even when I was at Ohio State, we labeled that Jersey, New York area uh, as, a, as a key uh, area for talent. You know, got Curtis Samuel out of there when I was at Ohio State from New York City. You know, so we got to tap in there. We got to go in there and compete with those schools. And, 
you know, present this Temple brand and show them that, you know, that everything that they want uh, out of football and an education that they can get right here at Temple. Okay, we'll go to Kyle Nash, black and gold banneret, please, for the next. If no, Kyle, go to Trace Trilco, please. Next one. Uh, Coach, for this to be a successful season for you, what are you going to need to see from your defense? Physicality. We, we, we got to hit people in the mouth. You know, we got to do it often. You know, obviously, um, you know, negative plays, creating negative plays, you know, uh, creating turnovers. And these are things that I think our defense are, are, are well capable of. These are things that they showed um, in the spring. You know, that's the one thing uh, that I think that can become a reality during a, during a real game, you know. So uh, it starts with the defensive line. You know, our, our D-line coach has done a phenomenal job of, of getting these guys to buy into an unselfish way of going about business. You know, uh, our defensive coordinator, DJ Elliott, has brought in a phenomenal scheme that, you know, uh, not only causes problems systematically to offenses, but allows our players to, to cut it loose. Very simple way of installing, they understand it, uh, they believe in it at any given time, a certain scheme could be called and anybody on that defense side of the ball can be the playmaker uh, for that given call. So our players have bought into that, you know, um, but creating negative plays, creating turnovers, and just being extremely physical uh, will give us a chance to win ball games on defense for sure. Appreciate it. First year head coach Stan Drayton bringing back that temple toughness. Excited to watch you guys start things soon in the 2022 season. Have a great fall camp. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Rini, I mean, it's something that has been known for this temple team is that toughness. Yeah. And he mentioned it. We saw some of the drill work that they had done. It's the identity of what this program has been built on. He's going to bring it back. He mentioned it. Coach Drayton has coached under some great head coaches, some great programs. In that toughness and physicality he's going to bring in. He, he's an old-school guy. He yeah. knows it doesn't matter how fancy the offense is, how fancy the defense is. You build your teams from the inside out, interior line play, offense and defense of line play, and then you build out from there. He knows that. He's going to do that. Um, they're going to be physical this year. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there was no, we're going to do this. We're, we're already doing it. doing it right now. And the schedule is interesting because the start of the schedule is pretty favorable to them and a chance to get off to a good start. That Duke game will be very interesting. Lafayette, Rutgers, UMass up there. And then you go at Memphis, at UCF. And then the bottom portion of that gets tough when you have to go to Houston and then host Cincinnati. But, but I agree with you. And I kind of feel like because it's his first year, it's kind of house money, right? You're, you're bringing in, to use the word culture again, you're changing the culture, you're changing everything. With the physicality that I think he's going to play with, you know, they only went 1-7 in, in conference next year. So I think they're definitely going to better that. Uh, three wins overall look for Temple to be markedly improved it felt like he had already kind of implemented some things I mean you only get a certain amount of time to yeah. practices during the spring that he could already felt that there was a cohesion in this team and one of his biggest gets if you will we've been talking about transfer portal is Dewan Mathis the former yeah. Georgia quarterback who transferred to Temple he was going to leave after last year mm -hmm. Stan Drayton comes in is able to keep him we talked about right sometimes recruiting your own players keep him on and that's a huge yeah. keep for him to, to have Dewan Mathis there quarterback. And Mathis has been an incredible story was originally yeah. committed to Georgia had a life-threatening brain cyst that was discovered by the school's medical staff had surgery ends up going to Temple has had some injuries as well but excited to watch him uh, another season uh, last year they they failed to score more than 14 points in nine games yeah do you what do you think this offense looks like from a from a guy who is known to run the ball himself I mean do you, do you see that run first out of this team yeah and I think they have to run first now you know I think they're definitely going to improve on point, points per game I, there's no doubt about it but I think you're going to see a downhill physical mentality of running the ball establishing the run and winning the line of scrimmage and then from there you can go vertical and, and get to the outside and take your shots and use the athleticism of a Dewan Mathis but Talk about Adam Klein, right? He talked about mm -hmm. that offensive lineman that's been around. And, and it is. The offensive line is that one group that always takes the longest to get the co cohesiveness. So by them moving 
players around to different positions in the spring, and he mentioned it, it was tough. I think Klein's going to slide in there and play center. The kid has played every single position on the offensive line. So once they get some cohesiveness there, those guys love run blocking. They love the physicality, so yeah. I, I think they're going to be happy with what Coach Drayton does this year. And you might see them throw the ball a bit because Mathis, I mean, he threw over 600 yards and five touchdowns during a two-day yes. stretch, so he has the ability to They're going to do both, absolutely. All right, let's get to some of the players that we're going to talk to. Offensive lineman Adam Klein, who we've been talking about, and defensive tackle Zach Gill. Uh, for both of you guys, we've talked about toughness, the temple toughness that Coach has brought in early. Adam, I'll start with you. What are some things that you guys have already started to do to build that temple toughness? I think it just starts in the winter workouts, you know, with our strength coaches and our strength staff. Uh, I think that's, you know, been established early in our program now with Coach Drayton. Um, he, got his message, he got his uh, message to us real clear and certain right away. Uh, he just wanted, you know, you know, we were getting back to that temple tough mentality, and uh, he wanted us to be great from the beginning. So, you know, it started in the winter workouts. It's led its way through spring ball, uh, you know, running the ball, uh, pass protecting, all that stuff, especially with the up front, you know, just being physical every single play. Um, and then, you know, it's led into summer workouts, and I'm just really excited where we're going and I'm excited for this season. We'll go right to questions from the media. We'll start with Sam Cohn from the Philadelphia Inquirer, please. Hey, Adam, Zach, good to see you guys. Um, just for starters, Zach, can you kind of walk through what the transition is like to, to go from playing def mainly defensive tackle at UNC to switching over to nose guard? Uh, I mean, the transition has been, you know, it's been pretty smooth. Uh, I'm pretty much seeing the same thing, just double teams. And uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty normal. And then uh, just for both of you guys, I mean, how, how much is the, the importance of leadership amplified uh, within the locker room, especially under a new staff like this? Uh, I think, you know, you know, I think it's kind of our job is to really relay Coach Drayton's message to the team. Um, I think we're going to, you know, we're kind of like piggybacking off of, you know, Coach Drayton's messages and our position coaching messages to the rest of the group, uh, you know, our team. Uh, I think that's a huge factor in how the team responds to Coach Drayton. Because if he sees, you know, the leaders, of this team or behind him, um, he's going to get the other players of this team as well. And, you know, I think that's the biggest part is, you know, if he's if we're on the same page as him and we're on the teams on the same page as him, that's the most important thing for our success. We'll go next to Javon Edmonds from the WHIP radio, please. Adam, you've been here probably the longest of anyone on the team. And when you see the schedule, Temple is one of the only teams in the conference that gets the farewell games for UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston. Have you looked at those and circled them as those games that you really want to get the guys more excited for and send those guys out of the conference with the loss? Um, I think, you know, definitely. I mean, um, I mean, you want to win every single game. Uh, that's, you know, that's part of football, you know, especially with my last season, you know, uh, how long I've been here at Temple, you know, it's kind of like an unfinished business where we just, uh, I want to get Temple back to where it was. And, you know, where I was when I was a freshman and a sophomore, you know, winning ball games, getting the bowl games, and winning those as well. So I think, you know, the biggest thing for me is, you know, as a leader is just to try to get the guys all on the same page. And, you know, I'm really excited about those games because we got really good opponents ahead of us and really good teams. And, you know, they're, they're going to require for us to bring everything we have every single weekend. Uh, and I'm just excited to get to play them, you know, give them everything we got and uh, show them who we are. We'll take the next question from Brock Hoffman from Football Stories Magazine, please. Adam, uh, you've played virtually, if not every position on the offensive line, just about. Um, how does that versatility help A, you as a player, and B, how will it help the team coming up this season? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, being able to play every position on the offensive line is a huge thing. Um, I think a lot of, you know, coaches can respect that and can really, you know, feel comfortable with me playing any position, um, especially, you know, with our offensive line coach, you know, Coach Wiesenhan, he feels very comfortable with me playing any position on the offensive line. And um, I think that gives, you know, a position coach and a head coach a lot of confidence, you know, you know, God forbid somebody, you know, goes down or there's an injury, uh, I could fill in somewhere on that spot uh, on the offensive line, you know, without, you know, a hiccup being in the offensive line. So I think that's a big factor, you know, just having that versatility and being able to play all five spots, you know, is a huge thing for me personally that I pride myself on and, you know, something that I can help my coaches out with. And Coach Wiesahan's back, and I, I guess he was probably here when you earlier in your career. So talk about him and, and your relationship with him. Uh, I mean, I love Coach Wies. Uh, you know, he's been probably my favorite coach I've ever had in my lifetime. So I have a really good relationship with him. A lot of it's just built on trust and honesty. Um, he's not a guy that, you know, is going to, you know, 
steer you the wrong way. He's only going to tell you the truth, and he's only just going to be honest with you the entire time. And, you know, Coach Weez has brought some of my best play out of me, and I, I'm just excited where this season's going to go forward and you know, what he's going to get out of me and what I'm going to get out of him. And I'm just really looking forward to, you know, getting the pads on and starting to play football soon. All right, thank you. We'll go next to Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call DT. Uh, this is for both of you. I heard Coach talk about the fact that there were some things culturally that needed to be changed. From both of your points of view, what were some of those things that you feel like needed to change in the culture at Temple? Um, I mean, first off, I would uh, probably say, you know, just defining what tough meant uh, to the program. Uh, we have four pillars, uh, tough, you know, meaning trust, unselfishness, family, and finish. And, you know, that's what we've really been pushing in this off season. And uh, I feel like the guys have definitely bought into that. Yeah, I think just to piggyback off Zach, I mean, you know, he's perfect in saying that, you know, just getting back to that Temple Tough mentality. Uh, I think we lost it a little bit there. And, you know, I think, you know, some of our opponents realize that as well. But uh, I think, you know, us moving forward, it's just about what we need to change as a program. And I think we're definitely on the right track in everything we've done from January to now. Okay, we'll go Leo Haggerty, please. I don't have a follow-up for that, Chuck. Sorry. No problem, Leo. We'll go to Trace Trilco then for the next one, please. Uh, for each of you guys, Temple picked in the preseason media poll last. What do you do with that? Um, I mean, personally, uh, it just adds fuel to the fire. Uh, you know, everybody has an opinion, but uh, the beautiful thing about having an opinion is you can change it. And, uh, you know, that's what we plan on doing. So, Yeah, I think Zach hit the, hit the spot on that one. You know, I think it kind of gives, you know, a chip on the shoulder to all of us. Uh, you know, we, we know what we're capable of and we know what we can do. And I think, like you said, it just gives fuel to the fire of, you know, we know what happened last year and we put that in the back, in the back mirror. And, you know, it's time to move forward and we're excited for what we're going to do this year. And we have really good uh, high hopes about what's going to happen. Thank you guys so much for your time. Good luck fall camp. Excited to watch you guys kick off this 2022 season very soon.